Patrick Gamble today. He's a visionary artist and he produces the most beautiful and evocative works of art. He's also a sensitive and empath who is able to actually tune with people and give them some guidance in their life. And we'll be touching on that a little bit today. So hello Patrick, it's lovely to uh, see you here with your beautiful artwork in front of me. I'm being spoiled. Perhaps we could start at the beginning because obviously you've had, oh my gosh, a long time um, it being influenced by your wonderful work and everything else. And then I'm looking at some uh, lovely pieces in the background here um, and that you've painted. I, the elephant is absolutely stunning dragon. I remember when you gave my son a dragon very similarly to that, which he still has on a postcard many years ago that he's kept. So he's been inspired. And when you gave it to him as a young man, a little, a little child that he was back then, he found it very emotionally connected because he was going through some very difficult times when we met you and he's always kept it so that's a little bit of inspiration to you because I know you're an inspiring fellow but how did you start your painting what sort of transformation did you go from in, did you always were you always a painter were you influenced from childhood or did you find yourself changing your life course and becoming interested in painting and and, and art and development um Again, it's quite a long time ago, but um, I didn't really see myself as creative. Um, I eventually, through many, 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 many jobs growing up, I eventually became a builder. And, um, I, and I guess that goes back to my background as a child, because we travelled a lot as a family. I'm one of six children. Uh, my father ended up taking us to many foreign countries and that, and, and living life um, and just kind of on the road a lot in a way but I guess being becoming a builder it kind of gave me a, an element of foundation to to kind of lay my roots down and then work with a home um but I kind of I was an atheist I was an unbeliever my mum brought me up to believe or to have a faith and I I, I kind of lost that part that she tried to give to us children well I did and but I was quite happy being an atheist it's a safe place um but I kind of like, you know, I still value people that believed in something. Um, my life went through many challenges, as people do growing up from childhood and everything, and no more than anyone else, just different maybe. And uh, I, I was working as a builder, and my, and my life became very blissful. I was in a really good, for once in my life, almost things kind of were falling into place. And, um, and it all started with a builder that actually, he was moving away and leaving the company that I worked for. And, and he brought this box of odd bits and pieces in that he thought were useful. Uh, in fact, he actually brought it into work for someone else and not me. But it actually ended up being given to me. And, and I just took it home and it was put into the garage. And the weeks went by and the months, months went by and I came to tidy this garage and found the box. Um, and I discovered three tubes of oil paint. And it's, and I, I just had a thought. It was a silly, it was on a Saturday, and it's a, it was a silly, in a way, childish thought, just to do a silly picture and stick on the wall for a reaction. Uh, I ended up painting a man's face, um, and it didn't mean anything to me. It just kind of came into place. And I kind of, in a way, yeah, family members came home and they said, gosh, you painted that. And I go, yeah. And they go, who is that? I said, I don't know. I have, I have no, I didn't know that there were going to be more paintings to follow. But it took three years to learn that who I actually painted was a spirit, one of my spirit guides. I didn't even know what a spirit guide was. Um, but it did lead me into, into spirituality, not to, not to learn about it, in actual fact, to close it down because I didn't have any connections to, I didn't understand anything. Uh, that was the initiation. Um, I actually ended up painting. Uh, I started to paint with oils because that was the paint that I found in the box and nothing happened in, in, in the beginning. Um, but as time went on, I started to dream and have visions and part of that and I started to paint and not really understanding what I was painting um, but it did lead me more down the spiritual path. Yes now we're going to go there with the spiritual stuff as you know as a painter a lot of my work and you may have seen some of it a lot of it is inspired from somewhere else and I remember having um, experiences as a child visions and, and, and things and dreams and knowing when people were going to pass and things like that and it was completely taboo so I was punished for it 
And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm never going to go there. And, and I didn't really until I was 28. And, and then my son came along and, and, I, and again, I had a, a bit of a spiritual awakening so I can understand that. And mine has always been through the art, the same as you, which is why I felt I wanted to connect with you. So I'm being sincere in why I, I like that experience and appreciate it. Because I was very anti it for a long time. Oh, oh, I'm getting this thought or this inspiration or this dream or I know something's going to happen or I'm going to inspire it into my work. I wouldn't do it. I'd almost want to copy something or not produce it. And yet I was producing things. And um, so I relate to this a lot. And I actually ended up drawing a guide that I didn't know I had either and had no relationship to it. And worse still, it was a Native American. And I was like, everybody has a, a guide that's a Native But this thing they talk about, what is this thing? You know, what is this yes. guy that's supposed to be a Native American, not me? And I was really not into it. So I get that. And But I became to realize a lot later that it was being inspired and there was a lot more behind that. So I accept that very much. So when you're being inspired to produce these beautiful pieces of work, which you do now, and I know you do spirit guides still for people, your, anim your animals are more than animals. They have um, meaning. Um, you have oracle cards with beautiful meanings behind them. Where do you find this inspiration? Do you have a specific time of day where you find that you can be inspired to produce a piece of work or does it come into you? How for the layman, the person perhaps doesn't understand this as we've just ascertained, where does it come from, from your point of view? Uh, well, it, it, it comes from something greater. I, I guess, in a way, it's you, you know the, we kind of look at our mind as a as a logical thinking, but I, I believe there's spiritual thinking as well. You know, we kind of like we have, you know the word thought. We have out the logical thought about dealing with the physical world, but there are spiritual thoughts that get placed into our mind, and and I and I really do. I've come to really kind of connect to those thoughts and. And they provoke, um, and, and I guess in a way, it, and it can come at any time. I mean, there is no, you know, I kind of say to myself and learn from myself and tell them there are no rules. There are, it, it can come at any time through any means. Uh, it could come when I make. I don't really work as a builder anymore, but um, but it could come when I'm working away, even just laying blocks and that. And you, because you know, I, I feel we slip in out of an altered state throughout the day. And I'm not saying deep altered state, but it's like, you know, we could use the word daydreaming. You know, we could use, but, it, it, but I do believe we fluctuate from, from one consciousness into another. But we're, all in, we're inclined to treat it all as logical thought or lo logical thinking. And I don't see it like that. I see there are two, two elements of this intuition, if you like, or psyche, along with the logical mind. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and I mean, dreams is another one. You know, dream, dream state is a powerful place to be. Agree. I entirely agree with you. Now, you obviously know my son, Liam, but he has these amazing, almost prophetic, beautiful things that come to him, the same as they do me. And I often wonder how that happens. But I think because he's been brought up with me, somebody reminded me recently, it allows it because I allow it now. I allow, as you said, this other consciousness, this awareness, this daydreaming. And when I do... And I say, go up to my studio, instead of just doing something very atypical, it'll produce some, uh, almost take a life of its own and there'll be a beautiful painting there. And you've developed your skills to use, I think, oils and acrylics and various embodiments of material as well. So you've been quite bold with your colours and your transformation and your in, in how you've brought that, if you like, to life, which I, uh, I as, a, as a fellow artist and, and a fellow sensitive person, find amazing. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people when I'm on your social media going, wow, that's so good. <laughs> Whoa, that's so interesting. Because you did one recently, which I think is, yes, in the background, of, of a tree, of, of this tree with the swan and, the, and that's beautiful movement to it. And for some reason, I was just totally transformed. I just went, wow, what's that? And you know what? I can't even just tell you how it made me feel. Do you get that sort of feeling off your paintings a lot in terms of how people respond to them? Yeah, there's, there's, it's kind of like, if you like the mess, if I'm receiving, you know, whether, because I believe, you know, the word seeing isn't literally just about seeing, it's about hearing and feeling. You know, if we take a feeling uh, and, and how we can anchor that feeling and paint with it, but it comes with a message. And, mm -hmm. 
and, and, and so as for myself, trying to capture a feeling or a message or whatever, wherever that is, and however that comes, it's really when, when someone looks at a piece of artwork and they can feel that same message, gosh, it's like, it's done its job. Uh, and, and whatever that connects to, because we have these triggers, whether they relate to this life or a previous life, because um, I believe the soul, the soul is, you know, the, the soulful energy within ourselves. It's so, so when someone connects to a piece and get that same feeling that I get, I think, gosh, it's, it's passed it on. It's done its Absolutely. work. It, Absolutely. It's, yeah. I, I totally, totally understand that. And that's very much the message that I wanted us to feel is that with your work and particularly you, your work and the way that you're able to translate, as you said, that, um, that emotive state, that special feeling of, of, of something that's deep within and then translating onto canvas is an amazing thing. And it does work, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate of that. But I've read the messages about how that's, how people have got different insights and feelings and awarenesses just out of looking at the image, which I think is just amazing. Now, you obviously have sort of translated that into um, a beautiful Oracle card set that you, you provide, which is also incredibly beautiful and amazing. Um, and you do all sorts of other things and you've sort of established this from one point to another. But I have to ask, what is what popular pieces do people go for? What sort of things do they are they drawn to? Do they want to learn about themselves? Or where do you find yourself being taken as, as on this path of yours with people in general? I think in a way, life, I, I guess when I came into this and started to paint, I, I, I used to go, I did go along to some mind, body and spirit first for the very first time. But I didn't even know how to talk about the artwork. I, I, I had the picture, but I didn't have maybe some of the understanding or, but I always felt a piece should talk for itself. Um, so, so when the art started to work, um, media, I, I kind of came into one of, you know, this circle of movement and, and I met a lot of people. And I guess in a way, um, just for example, the, the Oracle deck, um, I, I, I didn't have a lot of money back then. And I had eight postcards printed because people asked me for copies of the work. And, and I eventually ended up with 16 postcards. Uh, and a medium come to me one day and she goes, Patrick, I need to just have a quick chat. Um, how are you working with these cards? Uh, because I'm, she was using them in workshops uh, and, and meditation. And I said, I don't work with them. And she said, why not? And she said, do they have meanings? She said, did you feel anything when you paint? I said, yeah, they have meanings. And they don't necessarily have a name, but they have meanings. And she said, I want to know what these are. And she, she said to me, you should really think about working with these more. So that was the trigger. Um, but it took 10 years to get from that stage to reproducing a deck of cards. And then when a, a, a deck came along, uh, uh, when I was close to working a deck, um, I, it seems to meet people at certain times that have kind of gave me a shove or have directed me in certain directions and have even helped me in directions um, for these things to unfold. Um, so I didn't even know there were going to be a deck and it turned out to be a deck. Then I questioned whether I should reproduce a deck because there are literally hundreds of decks already. Why would I want to add another deck to a world where there are hundreds of them? Um, but it felt right and I'd and I done it. And, and because it's, and I, and I had such lovely response um, but it seems that the deck seems to reach, it's, it's, it's an or, I call it an oracle deck. And, I call, and really the deck is half a deck because the person using it is the other part. It wants to provoke their thoughts, their feelings, because that's what makes the reading very individual. You know, mm -hmm. and the same when we get into the art world, I hear so many stories about people that went to art college or went to this art teacher and they said it has to be this way you have to paint this and to me the creative energy has no boundaries it has no boundaries there is no right way that's it's right because we all perceive there is no limitations to art and creation whether it's just colors or whether it's a very defined image 
there's a place for it within within the world of creation absolutely agree with you it's like i could actually come genetically from a family of of pianists and artists so i found out later and because the family are quite stoic and they, and there's all sorts of troubles in them they haven't really exercised the arm of, of their of their creativity my father produces works but they're very tight and they're not allowing and when you allow this wonderful expression like you're talking about just letting the latency of that come out you get the most beautiful works and i think you've allowed a lot of that to come forward on the canvas and that's that is i am being a com very complimentary because it really comes over as such and i think that this message even as you said with a picture being able to deliver and this cards set being able to deliver i mean because you're older forgive me and, and i'm a little bit old too but over lifetimes you find that there are different phases of being pushed into situations where you you never had the opportunity before you don't really, really even know why and somebody says to you well, you know, you've been doing this for such a long time. Why have you not done this thing? And you think, I don't know. And as you said, 10 years have gone past and other things have happened, but not that. I think there's a big message in that. I think a lot of people are impatient. I think that a lot of people would need to understand that things are a process. You know, you're talking about a beautiful process. Um, and you're talking about being connected to a beautiful process in itself. Um, and then bringing it forward in, in a variety of ways. Um, I think that's an incredible message of poignancy. Um, and I, I, by the way, I, I respect that. I think that's a, a marvellous thing. You know, when I, I look at your work, all of the time I see different things in it as I'm looking in the background here. But people will ask the question, for example, when you have, um, say, their spirit guide around, or a or whomever has come forwards, then they will always ask, well, how do you get that into your head and then translate that onto paper? I mean, people ask questions like that all the time, obviously, because in a, they, as, as everybody is, they're quite layman-y, they perhaps don't know what a spirit guide is or what spirituality is or anything divine or any inspiration. So they often ask questions. So when you are with somebody, and you know you're more attuned to them, I assume from what I read that you use the deck of the oracle cards and then use that as some sort of uh, connection, then you become aware of their energies and I assume you get then something further in. Could you describe that process just a little bit for people so they can understand that a little bit so it makes more sense to them, if you would please? I, I guess in a way, the one thing I, I came, because honestly when I came into this, I, I really didn't have a clue. And, and then the paintings came about and and in a way even what i call the elders within like 20 they used to say to me patrick does it tire you and i used to go yes it tires me out and they used to say it shouldn't tire you and should rest but they never actually taught me how not to be tired and how not to do this and and i guess in a way and, and the interesting thing is like you, you know i've come to connect to myself and, and, and I create a space, you know, before a reading, I have the, I, I create the space. Uh, and within this space, I connect to me first foremost, and then I connect to my guides and helpers. Uh, because it's, it's, I have to, because they're coming to me. So I have to, connecting to me heightens my awareness. It fine tunes my, my thoughts and my psyche. And uh, um, so I become very much aware of my, even my taste, um, because I, I taste a feeling. If I, it's strange, but it's like, it's like spirit giving me a sweet. And I have to kind of, mm, what is this? What is this feeling? What, uh, but I create my space and the person comes in and sits down and, um, and I make my connection to them, not, not to, Spirit is very much part of that, but it is to them. And, and, and I paint. And for me, because I've also worked with a lot of psychic artists, there are many ways. I mean, some people um, see it through their third eye and it gets placed within their mind and they've got to transfer it from there onto paper. Some people see it on the paper. Some people just kind of go for it. And um, there are many, many, well, I see it outwardly. So I see it within their energy or within their aura. It uh, doesn't make it easier. It's still an energy and it still fluctuates. But I have to take it from the space and put it onto a board because I paint with oils when I do this. And it can only be oils. I can't work. If someone gives me a pencil, 
or acrylic, for that work, it has to be just paints on board. And because it's part of a spirit guide that I have, um, so I, I, I paint what I see, whether it is of a family member or whether it is of a spiritual guide or whether it's even of a animal, um, I take that feeling and what it represents and I have to put it into words within a reading. So I have to take that uh, and I don't hear, but I, I take my feelings of what I was painting and I try to put it together that it has a meaningful physical message. I don't necessarily give spiritual messages because I believe we're all spirit anyway, but mm. because I'm a psychic, it is to do with life and pathways and direction. Um, that doesn't mean that I, you know, sometimes I might paint mum or dad or granddad or grandmum, all these things, but it's in even from a, a wolf or a bear or any, any spiritual animal, or whether it's of a spiritual guide, it carries meaning and direction. Uh, and then I use my cards. Um, so the combination of all these things uh, gives me avenues or direction that hopefully I put together that makes sense of maybe a person's past, because we know our past has an influence on us. And, and, and it can be empowering, but it, it can also disempower us. You know, a lot of us will maybe lose confidence, self-esteem, self-belief. They are, they are not, that is not good to lose a, an element of self-belief or confidence. We, can't, we need that within our world to, to because it's an energy. Confidence is, is a, it radiates an energy. If we wind it down or wind it in, it is literally like putting a blanket over ourselves and it looks out, it's, it's self-nurturing, but it doesn't allow energy flow. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah, so, I, I've, so it's, it's, there's a number of aspects. And so a reading is a thought provoking because if we're gonna change our life, we need to change our thinking. If yes. we think the same, we create the same. <laughs> exactly. And we unfold that reality out in front of us because we're thinking the same. Absolutely. I love that. Now, you mentioned something interesting in there that I liked. So you're inspired by a guide to help you paint or perhaps somebody yes. else inspiring that. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, and you're then getting the palatability of that feeling and then translating that. That's tremendous. I love that. I agree entirely with you with people. I think we're on our own journeys and sometimes you just need nudges and ideas and yeah. direction and yeah um i think sometimes if we're interfered with we we come off quite badly um and you know i i did talking about energy i did a marvelous um exhibition that was completely by chance and i put my paintings there for the first time i was like oh um and talk about confidence i was a bit like oh no but then i thought oh no i'm going to embrace this thing i put them out there i did this thing. i went with the flow i had 30 people come through the day and just queue up to look at the paintings all asking for readings which i might add i had not um said i was going to do i did talk on, on painting and expression and some of the beautiful uh, qualities that you shared with me today because that's what i actually believe and um and then i ended up doing this wonderful um Ex, this sort of exhibition they all sat down and they said hello um have you got a message for me or some guidance and it was all about guidance well i sat with them and i gave them whatever i had and they were drawn to each of these pictures and whichever one they were drawn to then we went from there and it was like i was being totally inspired and i i obviously what you know whatever this is we, we obviously being guided a lot of people think particularly when they're male or they don't feel that they can connect to that easily because they're always trying to logic their world you know, you were saying about being a safe place as a, as a builder, but a lot of men, of course, will say, oh, oh my gosh, I've got, I might have this idea that I've got this connection to something, but I won't express it. And, you know, you're, there's you, so that I know, because you, you like your bikes and you know, your motorbikes and things, and, and, you know, you're very, very masculine, and there you are producing these incredibly fine pieces of work. So I'm guessing that you get a lot of ladies interested, but you get a lot of gentlemen and other people interested in trying to pursue their direction with you because of your position. The men, slowly, the men are slowly coming into it more. I mean, it is, you, you see, we have, we, we all owe the masculine and feminine, whether we're female or male. Um, we could see that, you know, the, the masculine is, is the strength and it's the ground and the feminine is, is, I see the feminine energy as power. You see, for me, I see feminine energy as power and masculine as strength. 
and they're massive. They're diff we need them both, and, and strength helps me deal with the physical world. But to be empowered, for me to do my readings, I've learned that I have to tap into the feminine side of me. I don't know, you know, I, I kind of joke a little bit. I think, oh, why is the power linked to feminine and not the masculine? But it, <laughs> that's how I see it. And I do believe that way. Because to, to empower the feminine energy actually allows me to feel more, to sense more, to talk more. A lot of men, and not all men, but a lot of men, they, we don't need so many words. Lady in the greatest respect you know and we, we kind of jump from one we don't observe um, uh, uh, the feminine wants a lot of information that's why that's why the ladies they 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 discuss a lot of things they talk because they're learning they want to they want to know all the little pieces where men don't deal with all the little pieces we 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 skip along and um uh, so and and i'm part of that but I've learned that to be empowered, we, we, you know, to create the balance. Um, so I have to tap into the feminine side of who I am. And, and it doesn't make me less masculine. It actually makes me m not more masculine, but it gives me something more to work with. So I, I, I'm able to work with my feelings more. And also to be empowered, I'm able to stand in situations and share a part of my life and because I'm in my power, it's, gosh, it's an, it's an incredible place to be. If I'm, yeah, it's just, it's just that we need the feminine energy, the male energy. We need, I, and I know that females need strength because we need the combination. They are a balance. It's yin and yang. It's the Absolutely, balance. absolutely. I did a painting that was yin and yang, and it was, it was conceptualizing this idea, and, and the woman sort of turned slightly to the side, and there's this very male energy, and there's very female energy, and they, they, they're, if you like, in the yin yang quality with them. And I remember being inspired with that one when I was quite in a, quite a dark place, actually, because I'd come through some issues, and I started painting again. And... Um, and I remember looking at that thinking, wow, you know, a lot of people, when they meet me, they're surprised because I have quite a lot of male energy, which I can have, you know, this, this I'm very in touch on a female level. I'm almost one or the other. And it's almost this sort of duality that sometimes I have to blend together. And so we have to have those things. And as you well know, my husband and, and my son are quite masculine, but Liam's managed to if you like work both of these qualities which is rather nice and you get this lovely sort of blend of, of, in, of intuitiveness and expression he's able to communicate and then express i agree it's a lovely quality but i know it's one that people think i think people as you said boys and and girls are less definitive like that these days the boys will actually try and say well hey well if i can do something like this i'm going to have a go at that but it is interesting because people think about things like that and certainly when i've told them about yourself patrick they said oh he's, he's a man he got he drive, rides bikes and he's doing these wonderful paintings i said yes he does he does both which is why the inspired question because you know i've had that before okay let's go back to some of the other interesting things that you've got to do because you've done recently done i saw a sacred geomet a geometry set like a like a beautiful yeah. geometry set yes That's that so I, I work with different people, so I become part of different projects. Um, the other, the other, because I'm into the creative energy, um, mm. um, then, then maybe people call upon me to maybe bring in. They have the words uh, to, to lay out, and they call upon me for the creative input. Uh, so I, I work with different people on different projects, and and, and the and so there are there is a tarot deck and there's a, an alchemist deck and. So I've, I've supplied the artwork for those other decks within that. I've also do CD covers uh, and sometimes book covers. And yeah, because everything, can, I mean, if you take a, like a logo, um, you know, it's, it's very powerful in a way. It's symbolism. It's symbolism. We use it so much within our modern day. Um, but it's very, very, it's very powerful and it carries meaning. You know, there are symbols that have gone through time, throughout the ages, and we still know what they mean. And um, so it's, it's, yeah, when we get into the sacred geometry, it's, it's always intrigued me, but I've never done nothing with it until maybe that I, I need to do more. But obviously, life kind of, we go off on different tangents. And um, so, we, so I 
I, it's, life seems to be with me where I have time to work quite deeply on certain things and then I'm taken away. I work away from home a lot. And so obviously I, I have, when I'm home, there's so much, there's a lot of everything to do, you know, from everything. <laughs> so I, I, but I do work away a lot, which doesn't necessarily give me the time to always create. But I had a, a time where I, I felt really for the creative energy needed, to, the, the sacred geometry needed to come out. And so, yeah, so it, it's incredibly powerful stuff. I mean, it goes back, the flower of life has been carved in stone thousands of years ago, and it represents DNA. And, you know, it's in everything. It's, it's, it's the seed of God. And, and it was carved in stone thousands of years ago, but we only scientifically, we only discovered it, not that, you know, I mean, not, not thousands of years years ago and it's literally in everything it's in plants it's in it's in everything um so it's quite incredible and, and we see the sacred geometry sacred geometry is vehicles vehicle mm. transportation so they're that the, everything vibrates at a frequency uh whatever whatever it is it vibrates at a frequency yeah what do you do away that takes you so far away and then back into your work you're working somewhere else and then doing your art otherwise what do you do then oh well I, I do things from from my body and spirit fairs so i could be i you know i i travel all over the country with them um so they could be some of them are three day four day most of them are two day so yeah. and if i'm driving maybe to wales i might incorporate a day of sittings on so i could be away for seven days uh, and then i come back and i might be back for three days and i'm away again for four days and then i come back so uh, my diary is full of working away at different so of so a combination of fairs um i and maybe just doing private readings um i teach i teach psychic art and i teach vision art because i have this everyone is creative we may not be able to create like someone else but everyone is creative it just needs unlocking and um, and and so yeah, I, I teach the creative energy, uh, and I guide people. So I don't use anything special when I'm painting. Uh, most of it is total brushes. Um, I work off plastic, just plates and paper plates. And the, you know what 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 the, the people that come to my workshops, what, what I give them to use is exactly what I use to paint my pictures. Um, and yeah, so so. There's a lot of creative energy within the workshops, whether they are vision art or psychic art. I have the Oracle deck. I teach the Oracle deck, which has been really, in a way, it's 25 years of work. And so I, I, I teach that. It takes me, I've been to Canada, I've been to Japan, um, I've, I've taught in Europe. Um, yeah, uh, there's, there's, there's not enough time. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a full-time artist, if you like, guide, teacher, uh, workshop leader of, of these wonderful creative expressions. I agree entirely on the creativeness. For example, I'm going to use an example again because we're talking about something that's a little bit outside some people's box. So we'll just give that a little bit of latitude. Um, Nick, who you've met, my husband, he's very, very technically creative. Oh my gosh, anything, anything technical. In any way, he can make it work and he can transform what we know to be inventions of various alchemy based things together and build them into something that's very creative, but completely conceptually different to my creativity, which means I can take anything in the house and anything anywhere and anything outside and create something, um, and which I'm pretty infamous for because it's what I've done for a long time. And it's like, you know, I mean, I'll make robes and outfits out of things for people who've got to be in the art so that they can perform. And we'll make them literally out of some rags and hats and things from the kitchen and just put it together. Because people need to, to, to be creative. I think that's a lovely uh, message about everybody having that latent creativity. Because I think we're naturally here to create and to find our expression and to find ourselves. Not just to have the experiences of cars and, and nice things. And I'm sure they help, but it's not all about that is about other types of being, if you like. And that's an amazing message. If you think about that, it's a pity more people can't find themselves within that because all these celebrities don't necessarily endorse that quality. They're endorsing a whole different way of being to perhaps the one we're talking about today, <laughs> which is, you know, you can be creative in the kitchen, can't you? You can be creative in the garden. Yeah. 
But you know, it's it, it, it just, you know, a lot of my talks have been about that. What is your creative expression? Um, I, I very much enjoy that. I think that um, with, with energies, I often find that you find yourself working with certain people who do bring on your energies and at certain times in your life when you're more connected to their um, flow of things. And then, of course, you're able to then, if you like, synergistically roll forwards. Um, and I've noticed that with your, your, your career, which has been amazing within the art um, communities. And you're very much respected, Patrick. Not that everybody will, I think you get to be told that sometimes, but a lot of people really do um, respect you and, and what you have to, to offer. Um, and I think that your journey has been amazing because a lot of people wouldn't have stepped off a path onto a whole creative or even spiritual path and say, wow, let's just do this thing and then make it work because they'd be far too scared to do that. I mean, they'd be far too scared to want to do this thing. So what advice would you give somebody if they felt that they wanted to maybe touch somebody's life or talk to them about perceiving it differently? Or mm, how, would you, how would you guide them forwards if you could from your experience? Because remember, it's, you've been doing this a long time. And I know it's- I, I was given advice in my very early days and the advice one one key point was to be consistent uh, and that you know that doesn't mean it's going to be easy it means you have to be consistent if you keep throwing stones you will eventually hit a target <laughs> that's true i like that that's very good yeah. so yeah. i've become very consistent i've also come to learn that i i and you know i've, I've had a lot of even coming into um display in my work there's been an element of criticism um i i had clashes in my early days between the heart, heart association um who are qualified artists and what i do and i i kind of in a way but in, in some of it's been quite challenging um and even public public demonstrations um i guess the, the second word is trust which is a big one and 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 we have to be truthful we have to come from a place of truth um so so and so it's kind of in a way i've never forgot my background i've never forgot where i've come from and you know i had very little schooling growing up and and i used to struggle with that element of not having a a, a kind of education but i guess in a way i managed to to some extent self-educate myself and uh, and even now, I, I, I guess the age I am, it's not that long ago that I come to realise, I was in denial of being dyslexic. I just thought it was part of my lack of schooling as well. Um, but I still find it, it hinders me. But the, the form of, when we, when we, there are many forms of expression and there's many forms of creation. And as long as they're kept in a place of truth and good, it's, it's the law of attraction in a way. The, the law of attraction does say, but it depends on what we get involved in. And so it's kind of like um, this consistency to keep going along the way. And even in my early days, my building work actually funded my paintings. Um, so it's been, it's, been, it's been a hard, you know, the early days were very, very difficult. And, um, but, I, but I guess I just felt that there was something and something that I had to follow. And, and, I, and, and, and learning that there's, there is more to life than just the physical. You know, there is more to life than this physical. But meeting a lot of people and meeting numerous people that are from hypnotherapists and talking to a lot of people, even from you know, witch doctors from Africa to hypnotherapists in this country, you know, that the mind is a complex thing and we have to be aware of our mind thought. Because if we get involved in, in, if we get involved in the challenges of life, then it promotes the challenges. But if we can, if we can be in this place, this other place, which is not easy, it's not easy to to hold a positive energy. It takes energy to promote positive energy. So we have to be aware of our energy levels, and energy levels is something else that I've become more aware of in the last six years. So I cannot allow my energy. My energy is not always been in a great place because life is challenging and life my goodness me life life can leave you lying on the floor and um, but I've come to learn that I can't allow my energy to drop so I've become very aware my energy can still get low 
but I have to I have to pull on energy. I have to it's like a battery. I have to recharge. And recharge doesn't mean going to sleep. Recharge means being aware of energy flows. Uh, and so I take time to visualize because I have to visualize. I I can't read a I can read a book. I but I can't read a book and absorb it. I can't. Um, I I seem to get to six pages, and I can't. See, it doesn't hold me. I can't seem to. Um, so, so I have. I've learned that I have to give my brain an image to work with. Um, maybe that's why I'm a vision artist. But I have to give my brain an image. And so, the vision. The vision is very powerful. So we. So we give ourselves vision. Now, this is interesting because I'm gonna because I find a lot of crossovers today, and and I'm finding it very interesting from my own spiritual journey. You mentioned that a number of things that I am thinking about, energy is one of them. There are many children that I've met and many young people who've got ADHD, dyslexia and all these sorts of things. who have got this amazing creativity and connection to things that perhaps they're not aware is perhaps part of maybe the condition or something we, we learn, as you said, to have to hold something in our heads or bring a vision or idea in. I think that's a magical quality. But of course, you're saying that to, to me and I'm thinking, Hey, hang on. I recognize that um, because I think it's a valuable thing to think about. Um, I think that life does take us on up and on these incredible, you said, put you on the floor, put you back up again. But of course, that depth shows in your paintings. I hope you under understand and appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah. kind of, yeah. I, I, the, the thing, the difficulty is working with, I guess, with certain, because I've worked with a lot of people, um, I, I guess in some ways we have to live an element of our life for elements to unfold or where we're in a, pl a place of being more open so a person can be very blocked and it's so that's where suggestion of certain words or images can can help to um because basically it's about empowering someone and we're in everything we do um so so it's 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 not always easy to because some people find you know because i do a lot of readings for people um, but a lot of people that I give readings for, I've also been in those same situations. So I kind of, um, I understand not all, not all, because it's, but a lot of things I've, I've, I've been there in some form, way or shape because of my past. And the thing is, is that, but some people are not ready to move forwards. They're not in a place because they're still carrying maybe pain or, or hate. Hate is a big word, but we're all human. And at certain times, hate can be very, it's not healthy, um, but it, but it, and, and it can be destroying. Um, but it, but it, but it, 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 like time is a healer. And, and as we, but you know, some people, yeah, it's, it's where we are in, in many things of our life and how that unfolds in the journey. You know, I've become aware, I wouldn't change anything of my path. Even my challenges, I wouldn't change the major challenges in my life because if I changed them, I would sit here now in front of you a different person. And, and so I, I can't change any of it. I embrace it. I, I work with the positives of a negative. But a lot of people are still into the negative of a negative. You yeah. sometimes think we've dealt with it because we kind of sweep it under the carpet. Think, yeah, I've dealt with it. And then many, right. many years later, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> where has that just come from how has that made me how am i this this emotional wreck there and how after what well, i thought i dealt with that and and, and and a lot of it is acceptance a, a lot of it is also forgiveness not forgiveness of others but it, it forgiveness is about it releases us to move forward it doesn't it's not forgive because we all we all have karma i do believe in karma and, and uh, so, so forgiveness is not literally about forgiving a person. Forgiveness enables me, it doesn't, it doesn't allow me, it, it doesn't fester. I'm a, I, it, it allows me to freely move forwards. Uh, and, and, it's, and, it, and it's quite empowering. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, but, it, but it can also take, a, it can take time. time yeah. It, yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's yes. My, my boss, my working boss said to me, he says, Patrick, he said, we need two lives, one to learn and then one to live. 
Oh, <laughs> I like that. Now, do you know what? You've been, you're incredibly inspiring to talk to and you come to life in, 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 in the flesh, which is, I assume, why you go and do all these wonderful workshops and all this wonderful work that you're doing. Um, and it's really nice to get that connection because you're talking the truths. Some of these yeah. truths, we all know that we don't, you know, we think, oh, we know, and you, you're sharing. And as you said, you're in touch with that. And it's coming over you as a person and the embodiment of you. I believe in these, these things too, karma and a variety of things. I'm sure a lot of people do. And in fact, more people than not and a lot of people believe in past lives and perhaps more either that multi-layering of qualities or perhaps things they've brought forwards but they're scared to embrace it and you're able to then connect these things to people your message of you know, things taking time and time being a heal and finding yourself over over a process of understanding things is very true to being human the human quality which i absolutely adore because i think that's a whole process um and who hasn't been the places that we're talking about? You know, lots of things we've touched on. Absolutely. Absolutely. It comes with life. It comes with life. It comes with life, especially if you're living and you're embracing what you can and getting out there and doing that thing we talked about. I've had an incredibly um, wonderful, um, uh, if you like, interview with you. It's been more of a talk with us. It's been lovely. But I'm going to thank you now for being such a wonderful, wonderful person to talk to. And so many lovely places that we've gone that you've allowed to talk about and I actually respect and appreciate that. Bye bye, love to all. Bye bye.